Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Amanda and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this cute amigurumi frog. This is a complete tutorial for free. If you'd like the written instructions for this pattern you can find it on my Instagram page and you can also find a paid PDF in my Etsy store if you'd like to support me. This pattern is beginner friendly so that it is a great first project if you're new to amigurumi and if you're experienced with amigurumi it's a fun cute design you can add to your collection. Let's jump into the materials for this tutorial. Alright, so to start off with yarn, today I'm going to be using Lily Sugar and Cream 100% cotton yarn in the colors hot green and black. This is a medium weight worsted yarn and you can also use Bernat Handicrafter cotton yarn if you do have that available. For crochet hooks, I'm going to be using Clover Amours 2.75mm crochet hook, also known as a size C hook. You'll also need polyester fiber fill to stuff your frog. You'll need two 12mm safety eyes and the backings. And in addition to the eyes, you'll also need a lighter. The lighter is used to melt the backing of the eyes and I have a separate tutorial which I'll link below where I show you how I do that. You'll need a yarn needle to sew the eyes to the body, to close up the body and embroider a mouth. You'll need scissors to cut your yarn and you will need sewing pins to pin the eyes in place and to pin the area where you want to embroider the mouth. Now that we've gone over all the materials required to make your frog, let's jump into the tutorial. So we're going to begin with the body of the frog and to do that we're going to have six single crochets and we're going to make those in a magic ring. If you need any help with magic ring, I have a separate video where I show how to create them. I'll link that here. So to begin, we're just going to create six single crochets. Here's our second, our third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Just pull up a loop take the magic ring off and we're going to double count that we have six, which we do. And then we're going to pull the loop tight and pull that tail through. And then we're just going to insert our hook back and connect the sixth stitch to the first stitch. We're going to insert our hook through and slip stitch through. And that's round one. Now I'm also going to cut this yarn tail. So I'm just going to grab some scissors and snip and remove that. And then we're going to continue on here with round two. So for round two, we're going to create an increase in all six of our stitches. So round one ended with six stitches, so we should have six increases in this round. And at the end of round two, we should have 12 stitches total. I'm going to complete this round and then show you guys round three. For round three, we're going to create one single crochet and then one increase. We're going to repeat that six times around and at the end of this round we should have 18 stitches total. I'm going to skip now to round four to show you the next pattern. For round four the pattern is going to be two single crochets and then an increase. We're going to repeat that pattern six times around for this round and at the end of this round we should have 24 stitches in a circle. I'm going to keep going and meet you guys at round five. All right, so for round five, the pattern is going to be three single crochets and then an increase. We're going to repeat that six times around. And at the end of this round, we should have 30 stitches. 
There's our three single crochets and the increase. Here's what that looks like. I'm going to keep going and I'll meet you guys at round six. For round six, the pattern is going to be four single crochets and then an increase. Again, we're repeating it six times around. And at the end of this round, we should have 36 stitches. So our fourth single crochet and our increase. And after this increase, I'm going to keep working around and I'll meet you guys at the beginning of round seven. All right, so for round seven, we're going to be working five single crochets and then an increase. We're going to be working that pattern six times. And at the end of this round, we should have 42 stitches. Here's our increase. And as usual, I'm going to keep working around and I'll meet you guys at round eight. For round eight, the pattern is going to be six single crochets and then an increase. We're going to repeat this six times around. And at the end of this round, we should have 48 stitches. This is our second to last round of increases. Here's our increase. There's what that looks like. I'm going to keep working around and I'll meet you guys at round nine. Here we go. So this is our final increase round. For round nine, we're going to create seven single crochets and then an increase. We're going to repeat that pattern six times around and at the end of this round, we should have 54 single crochets. Here we go is our last couple stitches. And I'm going to finish off the round and then I'll talk about what we're doing after this round. For rounds 10 to 18, we're going to be doing single crochets in each stitch all the way around. The point of these rounds are to build up height in the body. So I'm going to do all these single crochets off screen and I'll join you guys at the end of round 18. All right, here we are at the end of round 18. As you can see, I've just done all my single crochets to build up height on the body. And now we're ready to begin round 19. And round 19 will be shaping legs for the frog. So to begin round 19, we're going to create three single crochets. And then we are going to chain five. And then we are going to create five single crochets after we skip 10 stitches. So here we're going to count two, four, six, eight, ten. And in the 11th stitch here is where we'll put our first single crochet. And then create four more single crochets. And just quickly, you can see what we've created here is the first hole for one of the legs. This is going to be a back leg. So this is the back of the work and this is the front of your work. So continuing on, now we're going to chain four. And then we're going to create three single crochets after we skip eight stitches. So we're counting two, four, six, eight. And in the ninth stitch here is where we create our first single crochet, second and third. And now we're going to chain four again. And we're going to single crochet five after we skip eight stitches again. So here just to skip, we're going to count, we're going to go two, four, six, eight. And in the ninth stitch, we create our first single crochet. 
and then we create four more single crochets. And now we're going to chain five. And we're going to single crochet two after skipping ten. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten. In the eleventh one here, we create our first single crochet. And our second single crochet. And that ends off round 19. You should be in the same spot. Remember that we started with three single crochets. It's good use to use a stitch marker. Um, I don't use one here, but um, good habit to use one for sure. So as you can see, these are the two back legs. They're a little bit larger than these two up front. The two up front are also a little bit closer together. And as I mentioned, the top here is where the mouth and eyes go. And yeah, so this is the front and then these are the back legs. So continuing on, what we're going to be doing is closing up this big circle here. We're going to go around and around to seal up the body. So bringing our hook back, we're going to tighten our yarn and continue on. Round 20 is going to be four single crochets and then an invisible decrease. So to do this easily, I'm going to demonstrate how these decreases are going to work along the chains because it's a little bit trickier. So to begin, we're going to create four single crochets. And when we get to the chain stitches that we made, we're only going to work in the front loops, not the back loop. So we're going to go under the front loop here and create our last single crochet. And now we have to decrease. So we're working in the fronts only. We're not working in the underside of the chain. We don't want to work into these bumps. We don't want to work in the back bumps either. We want to make sure we're just going under these front loops. So to create the invisible decrease, we're going to bring our hook and go under the front loop of the next stitch. So we're going to go underneath the first loop and then underneath the second loop. Note there is no yarn over there. So once we've gone through both of those front loops, then we yarn over our hook and pull through. Make sure you pull through both loops. And then we yarn over again and pull through and that completes the invisible decrease. As you can see, um, there it's a very good decrease because it looks very similar to the single crochet stitch. So carrying on with the pattern again, it is four single crochets and then an invisible decrease. Here's our second single crochet along the chain. And now we're back to a regular single crochet stitch. So we're going to work through um, that stitch as normal, not just the front loop. That's our fourth single crochet. And then we're going to create another invisible decrease on the regular stitches here. It's a bit easier to get underneath those front loops, yarn over, pull through and yarn over and pull through to complete the invisible decrease. And as you can tell, the invisible decrease is noticeably different than the regular single crochet, but this stitch is way flatter than a traditional decrease. Um, and the look is much more preferred. So I'm going to continue on with this round doing the four single crochets and the decrease and I'll meet you at the end of this round. Alright, so now that that round is completed, we're going to just be closing up the body circle here. So for round 21, what the pattern is going to be is three single crochets and then a decrease, an invisible decrease. And we're going to repeat that six times around. And at the end of this round, we should have 24 stitches. There we go. So there's our three single crochets and then a decrease. And then from this point on, um, it should be much easier to do the decreases and work around in the circle now that we're not working through those chain spaces. Every stitch you should be working in should be the top of a single crochet or decrease from the previous round. I'll meet you guys at the end of this round. 
For round 22, the pattern is going to be two single crochets and then an invisible decrease. We're going to repeat that six times around, and at the end of this round, you should have 18 stitches. So there's our two single crochets, and here's our invisible decrease. I'm going to keep going, and I'll meet you guys at the end of this round. Alright, for round 23, the pattern is one single crochet, one invisible decrease, and then we repeat that six times around. And at the end of this round, we should have 12 stitches left. This is the second to last round to close up the body. I'm going to repeat that around, and I'll meet you guys at the final round. Alright, here we are on the final round. The pattern for round 24 is to decrease six times. These are all invisible decreases, and at the end of this round you should have six stitches left. I'm going to quickly create those six invisible decreases, and then I'll show you guys how we close up the body. Alright, so I've just finished my six decreases. Now we're going to close up the circle of the body. I've cut off my yarn tail and attached it to a yarn needle. So to close up the body, what we're going to do is we're going to work from the outside moving to the inside of the circle, going under that front loop with our yarn needle. So from outside going in, we're going to pull the yarn through, and we're going in a clockwise direction. So now under the second stitch, again always outside going in and under the front loop, we're going to bring our yarn needle through, and then pull the yarn through under the third stitch. And I just would like to point out that I find it easiest to kind of adjust the yarn as I go through each stitch to make sure it's tight instead of going under all six stitches at once and then pulling it tight. Um, with softer yarns like acrylic, it, it would be fine if you go through all six, but cotton kind of gets stuck sometimes and if you pull too hard it might break. So just um, pull under each loop and then kind of tighten it up at, before you move to the next loop. There we go, which is what I'm doing now. As you can see it kind of gets caught. So this is the last stitch. We're going underneath the front loop. I'm pulling through. And then we're just going to make sure all the stitches are tight. We want it to be as tight as possible without breaking it to make sure that the body does not come undone. And then you're going to take your yarn needle and go right through the center of that magic ring. And you can bring the needle out. So you pull the yarn through the center of the circle. And then I just like to tug on the tail and kind of use my thumb and press around. Um, what we're trying to do is make sure the center of that circle points down. As you can see, it sticks up a little right now. So I like to press it down, pull on the yarn, and make sure it feels secure. And once you're done, you can tuck the yarn tail into the body. So this is the body finished, all closed up. These are the back legs. These are the front legs. So what I'm going to do is stuff the body quickly with polyester fiber fill, and then I'm going to show you how we create the legs. Alright, so here's the body all stuffed. Now what we're going to do is start with the legs. I'm going to show you guys how I create the small front legs. Um, we're going to start with this one here. So what we're going to do is take our hook and we're going to insert into this stitch here. And then we're going to work clockwise around the leg. So, this first part is not part of the written pattern if you're looking at the instructions. This is just to attach your yarn. So we're going to take our yarn and yarn over and pull through. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through again. And then we're also going to yarn over and pull through one more time. Um, we're just going to tighten up this tail. The first stitch is just to attach the yarn to the body. This stitch here, this chain, is to build height for the first single crochet. 
And this right here is the first single crochet, which is the first stitch of this round. There we go. And then here, just completing that single crochet. So just to recap what we did, in the starting stitch, we attached our yarn with a slip stitch, created a chain, and a single crochet. The reason for the second chain is it builds height and makes the stitch secure, so when you come around, you will have a space to insert your hook to attach that first single crochet. All right, and also here, this little yarn tail, um, I didn't do it in the first stitch, but what we're going to do as we continue to work around is work over this little yarn tail to make it secure so that doesn't unravel. All right, so I'm just attaching my hook back. This yarn tail, before we work over it, you wanna make sure you pull it really tight to kind of hide that first slip stitch where we attach the yarn, make it super secure. And then we're going to begin single crocheting around and we're gonna make sure that we work over this little yarn tail. So we're yarning over and creating that stitch on top of that yarn tail. This will help hide the yarn tail and keep it secure. And after you've done a few stitches, you can either trim the yarn or just tuck it into the body. For round one of the front leg, we're just single crocheting in each stitch around. So there are eight stitches on the body. If you recall in round 19, we skipped eight stitches. So we're working into those stitches right now. So this is long enough. Um, the yarn tail is pretty long, so I'm just gonna quickly trim it. Um, but like I mentioned, you could just tuck it into the body. And we're gonna continue on, single crochets. I'm sorry for the movement, this was a little hard to hold. Alright, so we have one more single crochet to complete the eight single crochets along the body. Now we just want to quickly stop and double check that we do have eight stitches, two, four, six, eight, so we're good. Now to get back to the starting point here, we need to create four more single crochets along this inner, inner side of the body here. Now you can put these wherever you'd like. My best advice is to space them out as evenly as you can so there are no large gaps um, but like as you can see there are um, many different options and uh, my best advice is you have to start and end closest to the two outer stitches so like as you can see right here this is actually the side of a single crochet but if you skip it there would be a large gap here so I'm definitely going to work my last stitch there so I'll probably start here 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 and here roughly and just see where I could get my hook through. Um, just making sure that I'm making four single crochets total because this round has to have 12 single crochets. So to start off, I'm just gonna tuck my finger in there to push the fiber fill down and create the first single crochet. And of course you can always just make your single crochets and if you don't like the placement, once you get back to the starting point, you can just undo um, those stitches and try again. So my second one here, just forcing my hook through, bring the hook up and create a single crochet. There is quite a bit of tension when creating these stitches. So again, always be careful when you're using high tension on your yarn because especially with cotton yarn, as I mentioned, high tension, it can break. Oh, drop two loops there. Here we go, here's our third single crochet. 
and then I'll create the fourth single crochet in the side of this single crochet stitch here. And we're just working this final stitch, yarn over, and pull through. And we're done. Now these four, as I mentioned, are a little stretched out. That's totally normal. That's what it should look like. Um, and they are a little more difficult to work than the average single crochet just because of the tension between them. Um, but after that, it should all work out good. You want to double check your count to make sure you have 12 stitches before we move on. So for rounds two and three, we're just going to be single crocheting in each stitch around. We're inserting our hook first into that first stitch we made to start off round one, and that will connect the rounds. And then we're just going to keep crocheting around until we have finished round three. All right, so here we are at the end of round three. I've completed three rounds of single crochets, and in this final round, we are also going to be stuffing the foot before we close it up. And we want to do a couple decreases before we stuff, otherwise it just kind of pops right out. So the pattern for round four is to decrease six times, and at the end we should have six stitches. I like to stop after three decreases usually and stuff the foot then. Um, I'll do this off camera though because stuffing does take quite a bit of time. So I'll meet you guys at the end after I have stuffed the foot and finished these decreases. All right, so here I have finished my six decreases and stuffed the leg in between. I finished off by cutting a yarn tail and pulling my yarn through. Now to close up the foot, we're going to do it exactly like how we did on the body. And you go through each stitch and pull tight to make sure that you close up the foot. And then once you're done, again, you bring your yarn needle and go through the center. And then your yarn, of course, will be attached and you would pull the yarn through the top. Then I like to kind of tug on the yarn once it comes out the top and then really kind of flatten out that foot. And then once that's done, you can cut the yarn tail and move on to the next foot. I'm going to create the other two feet off camera and then I'll show you how to create one of the back feet. I'd just like to point out that the second front foot is made starting in the same spot and uses the same instructions. The other two feet also start in that same corner spot. Now let's take a look at how to make this back foot. So here we are. I have completed the two other legs you can see on the right, the front foot and the back foot. And now we're going to take a look at how to create this final back leg here. And the reason I'm showing you this back left leg is because this one is a little bit different. As you move around, when you start your round versus where you end your round, this left leg will be one row lower than the right leg. So what we have to do to make this leg taller, just to be the same height as this leg, is we need to um, create a few stitches. So we're going to create six single crochets here before the actual pattern begins. And that's just for this one leg. So when you look at it, it won't uh, wobble. You want your frog to stand even. Otherwise, this back leg would be a little bit shorter than the right leg. So to begin, we're going to insert our hook in the same corner stitch here. We're going to grab our yarn. And just like all of our legs, once we have our yarn tail, we are going to yarn over and pull through that first stitch. And then yarn over and pull through again to secure that first slip stitch to the body. And then I like to take the yarn tail and just tug it tight. You'll have to tighten it again later, but just to make it easier right now, you can pull it tight and hold it down. Then we create one chain. Again, this is to build height for the first stitch. And here is the first stitch now. It is just a single crochet in the same spot. 
and this is the first of six single crochets here. Again, this is not part of the leg pattern. This is six single crochets just on this back left leg, just to build a little extra height. So you can see there's the chain. My chain's a little bit big. If you're worried about the chain sticking out, you can always attach yarn to it after and kind of sew it into the leg to seal up a hole if there is one. Now I'm just gonna take that yarn tail, tug it super tight, and continue on with my single crochets. So this is the second one, and please note that you should always weave your single crochets over that yarn tail to secure the yarn in so it doesn't unravel. Another single crochet. Doing two more. And here's the last one. All right, so there are our six single crochets just to build height for this back leg, the back left leg. And then I'm just gonna quickly tuck the yarn tail in here And now, for the actual pattern, as you can see after we've done those six single crochets, I'm going to insert my hook again. And for rounds one and two, we're going to be single crocheting in each stitch around, and you should have 15 stitches around. Along the body, you should have 10 single crochets, and from this right corner to the left, we'll be working five single crochets. I'll probably work mine here here, here, and here, and here. Um, these three will be closer together, so I'll do that off screen and meet you guys at the end of round two. All right, here I am after finishing my two rounds of single crochets. Remember you're starting here because the first six stitches were not part of the pattern, that was just to build height for this leg. So for round three, I'm gonna insert my hook back. The pattern for this round is one single crochet and then an invisible decrease, and we're going to repeat that five times around for a total of 10 stitches at the end of this round. I'm gonna do that quickly, and then I'll show you guys how we're going to close up the back legs. And now we're at round four, where we're just going to do five invisible decreases all the way around. We're also stuffing the leg during this step, so I'll probably do two decreases and then stuff the leg and then continue on with the final five decreases before we close up the leg. So I'll just finish the leg off and show you guys the finished product. All right, and here is my finished body. As you can see, the top two legs are the front legs, the bottom legs are the back legs of the frog, and I'm just going to squish it around now to kind of move the stuffing to be in a position that I like. Um, when you look at it, you can kind of see that it's a little bit uneven. The one side is stuffed firmer than the other, so I'm gonna push the stuffing over. Just kind of squish it around. I like to squish it between my palms to kind of make it a little taller. And then you might also want to flatten the frog on a flat surface or on your hand to make sure that the legs are um, flat and stable and uh, I like to push the center part in where we close the body to make sure it's not sticking out. With the body complete we can work on the eyes. To begin the eyes we're going to take our yarn again and make another magic ring and round one of the eye is six single crochets in a magic ring. So at the end of the magic ring you should have six stitches. So here we go, we're going to create our first single crochet, second single crochet, and then we're going to keep going until we have six stitches. Again, if you're having trouble with this, I do have a separate video where I show how I create a magic ring or circle in slower detail. So here we've got our six stitches, just double check that you have six, and then we're going to pull the magic ring closed and pull the tail shut once we're done with that. There we go. And again, to finish off the magic ring, I like to slip stitch into the first stitch. And this makes the slip stitch my new stitch. 
So I'm working into that stitch, I eliminate that first stitch and it kind of closes up the circle so it's nice and pretty. Now for round two, we're going to increase in each stitch around. That will give us a total of six increases and at the end of this round, we should have 12 single crochets. I'm going to complete this round and then I'll show you guys round three. All right, so for round three, we're going to create three single crochets and then an increase. We're going to repeat that three times and at the end of this round, we should have 15 stitches. Here's my third single crochet and then an increase. Just make sure you have three and then the increase. And that's the pattern for this round. We're going to keep going around, do that two more times, and I'll meet you at the end of the round. All right, now that we've completed round three, rounds four and five are just single crocheting in each stitch around. So after the end of each round, you should still have 15 stitches. We're not doing any increases or decreases. This is to build up height for the eye. I'm going to complete the single crochets off camera and then I'll show you guys how we close up the eye. All right, so here we are at the end of round five. I finish off my two rounds of single crochets. To finish the eye, we're just going to slip stitch and pull up our loop. We're gonna grab scissors and cut our yarn here. And then pull the yarn through that loop pull it all the way out and tighten up the slip stitch to secure the eye closed. All right, and now that the eye's done, the next step is going to be placing the safety eye. So I like to place my safety eye right in the middle between rounds four and five. So if I grab my safety eye, so I have my safety eye here and you can see that it kind of takes up the height of rounds four and five. So when you actually attach the eye, what can happen is it can cover up these bottom loops here. And you don't want that because you need the bottom loops to sew the eye to the body. So if I take a finished eye here, I've already attached the safety eye. And if you need help with that, I have a separate video I'll link here. But what you want to do is take a needle, yarn needle, and dig out the stitches if the safety eye is covering them because you need these stitches to sew onto the body. So what I like to do is just kind of take my needle and make sure that I can get it underneath the stitches right under the eye. And here's a look at what the inside of the eye should look like if you've done the technique correctly where you melt the back to make the eye secure. Do the same for the other eye and then we'll move on to attaching the eyes and the mouth to the body. Okay, so now eye placement. As you can see, I've pinned my eyes here and when you're pinning your eyes, the goal is to make them as even as possible and to make sure, of course, that the safety eyes are facing forward. You want to look at your eyes once they're pinned from the top and the side and from the front. Again, you want to make sure that these safety eyes are both facing the same direction. You don't want to have one sticking out to the side. You can place your eyes farther back or forward or out to the side if you prefer that look. You just want them to be even in terms of distance between each other. So let's take a closer look at where I place my eyes if you want to place them the same. Here's the ring round two and three on the body and in between rounds three and four is where I lined up the inside of the eye. Now if you take a look across you can also see the back of the eye pretty much lines up exactly center with the center of the magic ring or the center of the frog. Alright so I'm pretty happy with this. I think now we're going to look at how we want to place the mouth on the body. To start off, we're going to grab some sewing pins and I just like to pin what I think is center on the body just to find um, a good reference point. And then you want to look at this center point from a couple angles from below to make sure it is actually center. If you look from above too, it helps um, tell whether it is center when you look at that magic ring and looking at the eyes going forward. So for the mouth, we're going to count two, four, six, eight, ten rounds 
and the mouth, I like to create it between rounds 10 and 11. So the mouth is sewn over those two rounds. So I've just pinned and I'm double counting to make sure that this is indeed round 10 here. So between these two white pins is rounds 10 and 11. And what we're gonna do is begin taking a few more pins and shaping the mouth. So I'm gonna move this bottom pin to the bottom of round 11. I kind of like this shape already, so I'll remove that other one. So I am I am liking this shape. I typically make the top of my mouth about four stitches wide. You can make it wider if you'd like. If you want, you know, a really wide smiling mouth, the shape doesn't have to be an exact triangle. You could put two pins in the bottom if you like it to be more of a circular smile. But I like the pins where they were um, I think this cute little V shape goes really well with the frog. And to see some reference of what it is we're creating here, here is a finished frog that I have. So as you can see, I like this little triangle looking smile. And again, this is about four stitches wide at the top. Now to embroider the smile, you wanna take your black yarn on your yarn needle. And I like to insert under the body of the frog and you wanna come up at one of the two top points. So you just wanna kind of wiggle your needle around till you find the right stitch to come through. Double check that it's the right one and you can remove the pin and just bring that yarn all the way through. And as you can see, it's kind of pulling through some of the stuffing, that's totally normal. You can just kind of pull it out to clean it up or I also like to pull out um, a little more yarn than you need and then if you backtrack it through the body it will suck it back down and then it will be clean. So next we're going to go in the top pin on the right and we're going to come out where the bottom pin is at the bottom of the smile. So as you can see we entered in the top right and then we're bringing it down at the bottom pin here. Then we're just going to slide the needle through a little more and pull it out the bottom. You can remove the pin. And we're going to pull the yarn through. Just make sure it's not tangled. And you don't want to pull the yarn super tight. What we're gonna do then is go underneath that top loop with our needle and pull that through. And then we're going to insert our needle back into the same stitch we came out of at the bottom here. Insert our needle and bring it out through the bottom of the body again. And then you just want to force your needle through and my needle's a little stuck. Sometimes that happens. Um, but just push till you get the needle through and pull the yarn out. Make sure it's not snagged on anything before you pull it tight. And now you can see the basic mouth shape is formed. So now I'm just going to shape the mouth a little bit. And it's important to really pull tight on the string that attaches to the bottom of the mouth here. Really make sure you pull that tight. And then just kind of take a look, assess how the mouth looks. If you're happy with it, you can stop there. Um, I like to take the needle. Sometimes it's easier. You can kind of get it under and move it around. If it's stuck on a stitch, kind of just shape it. I'm just kind of trying to widen it up a little bit. And then you want to check to make sure you don't want it to stick out too much because it can snag. So then just pull to make sure it's nice and tight. And if you're happy with that, you can trim the ends. But another alternative is this eye patch right here. Instead of starting at the bottom, you could bring the yarn out underneath the eye and bring those ends out up top. And then you can tie a knot and it would be hidden underneath where you sew the eye onto the body. Uh, but that's just another option. So I have the ends coming at the bottom here. Once you've made sure they're nice and tight, you just want to grab some scissors and trim off the ends. And now we'll look at sewing on the eye. So for the eye, I've removed the other one just to make it easier. 
We're going to sew the eye onto the body using a mattress stitch. So to make a mattress stitch, we're going to take a look at the top and go from right to left across the body. We're starting with the yarn attached to the eye, so we're going to the body first. And we're going to insert our needle under that stitch and come out on the left here. You can kind of see we're going underneath one complete stitch. Just to get a better angle of what that looks like, we pull through. So this is attaching the working yarn from the eye to the body. And that's that first mattress stitch completed. And now we're going into the eye from the body. And to do that, we're going to be working into this single crochet stitch under each post of the stitch. So here's where we started with the knot. We're working into this stitch here. So we're going, inserting our needle under the right side of the stitch and coming out the left side. We're working, if you're familiar, underneath the bar of the single crochet stitch. And you just want to pull that tight. And that is the second mattress stitch on the eye. As you can see here is in the body, in the eye. And now if we flip back over, our next stitch is going to be back into the body and we're going to insert our needle back in the same spot where the yarn came out of the body previously. So we're going to insert our needle right here and come out right there. So our needle goes under the stitch and out through the left here. Because of the angle, we're not working perfectly under the stitches. Um, you just have to kind of move along with the body lines based on where the eye is lined up. So we pulled that through. And now next, we're going to be working back into the eye, going under the next stitch from right to left. Here we go. You can see the needle under there and pull through. And I'll show you guys one more mattress stitch before jumping to the end here. So we came out in the body right here. So we're going to jump to the stitch here. And now we're going to be moving kind of horizontally across the body nicely through those stitch lines. There we go, right to left. Bring the needle through. There we go. And pull tight. There we go. So that's how we get started on sewing the eye. You just complete this process all the way around. Here's a closer look of what it starts to look like once the eye is attached to the body. I would just like to point out that you do stuff the eye as well. Um, I like to stuff the eye when you're about three quarters of the way, otherwise the stuffing will just kind of pop out. So what that looks like, once you've sewn a little more around the eye, um, there will be an opening kind of like this, and I like to use the back of my crochet hook again and kind of force the stuffing underneath and then finish sewing it closed. And do the same process with the other eye and you'll be finished your frog. And here we have our finished frog all sewn together. As you can see, this is the look from the front. Here's what the legs look like all done. The eyes are attached and our little mouth sewn on there. As I mentioned previously, the written instructions, if you'd like to refer to those, can be found for free on my Instagram page. You can also buy an inexpensive PDF on my Etsy store if you'd like to help support me. I'd really appreciate it. But this concludes today's tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.